Hi, Super Spruce here, back with another Antimatter Dimensions New Game Minus 5 video, episode 2. And you can see two paradoxes, and I was going to get this upgrade, so let's get it. Infinity power boosts time dimension. So, so you know how you know infinity power is almost actually useful? It gave me a grand total of 0.1 antimatter because of the powerful multiplier to normal dimensions, what is also going to affect time dimensions with no nerf, at least other than the standard dilation nerf. Hopefully this means I can start getting tick speed upgrades, which don't even actually reduce tick speed because new game minus five. Okay, now I have a solid 16 test multiplier to everything. Actually, it does seem a little bit nerfed. I know it's just the standard dilation nerf, what am I saying? And I still have zero time shards, even though the next tick speed upgrade is at zero time shards. So I've gained zero tick speed upgrades. I don't know when I can actually start gaining significant tick speed upgrades. We'll just wait and see. While I'm waiting, this upgrade's actually very useful because I gain 100 times more time shards. That's pretty important because even at a cool 60 times multiplier to the first time dimension, I am still gaining zero time shards, which is actually kind of insane. And it took this long. I have a 35 times, 35,000 times multiplier. And now, just now, I am finally starting to get some tick speed upgrades. A grand total of nine, which actually isn't too shabby because I only have three upgrades. This, this, and this so far. And then even if you count the paradox ones, that's one, two, three, four. That's a total of seven. So actually this is doing something. And now I'm up to 10 tick speed upgrades. But despite this, I'm still gaining 0, 0.000 antimatter per second. The only sign of that it's moved is now this is up to 0 0.2 antimatter. Oh my god. You're actually making some antimatter. Well, not really. <laughs> so I think this is a good point to um, start the next mechanic, which really I unlocked last episode, but it was kind of useless, I think, until now. And this is Paradox Dimensions. So basically, I have done this before. You have zero Paradox power translated to zero extra seconds used when matter exceeds your antimatter. So basically, this is going to extend the amount of time my matter can be over my antimatter. Now, if I'm just purely going for paradox points, that is a bad thing. Because the thing is that it's going to take longer to pa get paradox points. However, I think I got the most important upgrades here. The, ne the next significant upgrade here is four paradox points. And I don't want to wait four times. I want to do something more interesting. Besides, it's going to be reset by other layers. I'm not really sure what layers will reset this. I hope time dimension shifts don't reset paradox dimensions. Or, or not paradox dimensions, but the whole paradox mechanic. But we will see about that. I'm now up to 15 tech speed upgrades with 0.001 antimatter per second. And I don't think the tick speed upgrades are actually affecting the normal dimensions. If anything, they're only they're only affecting time dimensions, but it's not even from this. So I'm not really sure. Maybe it's, no, it's not this. No, not this. I don't, I don't even know what it is. The thing is with more time allowed with the paradox dimensions, I can get stuff like this, this, more of these, like, this may not seem like a lot, but it's going to double my antimatter production. And the cost doesn't scale until I get 10 of them. So yeah, I'm gaining more time shards than antimatter, which is kind of absurd. But I mean, same with infinity power. Even though that normally you have a lot less infinity power than your actual antimatter. Same with this. And I this might inflate eventually, but there's probably so there's enough nerfs here that nothing's gonna inflate 
in New Game minus five. So here we go. Matter is about to reset everything. 26 speed upgrades. Yeah, that's it. So this is where it's time to get Paradox Dimensions. I have used them before, so they're actually quite powerful. Take a look at this. Look how much this is actually increasing. I'm getting one Paradox power per second. And it's translating to an extra like four or five minutes. It keeps increasing left until matter reset. And it starts at one minute, which is or like the default is one minute. This is like going to extend the amount of time I have until the matter reset by like eight times, which is crazy. And because of how everything compounds on itself, it's going to, I could actually get some measurable antimatter, like one antimatter in a run. I know, insane, but that's what we're dealing with now. So, yeah, I kind of have to wait to see any results. So, see in a bit. This is actually an interesting effect. I'm not really that far into the run, but you can see I've actually gained enough antimatter that it, so like before, the matter did exceed my antimatter, but my antimatter actually is back over my matter because this is starting to really affect things. I'm gaining, well, 0 0.004 antimatter per second, which is a new record. I've made a total of 0.9 antimatter, yay. And I've gained 26 tick speed upgrades. And this is just the beginning because I still have another 9, almost 10 minutes of I don't even know. You can see. 588, that's 948, so I have used a little bit of this time, but I have, yeah, quite a bit of time left. I don't really know where this, this number comes from, because it's definitely not actually 9 minutes and 38 seconds. It's more like, that's like 2 hours or something, but this means I'm actually going to really start gaining stuff. And yes, I've now made over 1 antimatter, and I feel like I'm not... Maybe I'll gain enough antimatter by when this time is almost up that I can start buying stuff with it. Yay! Okay, I'm back like another hour later, and you can see I actually am making some serious antimatter. I have 933 antimatter. I'm st it's still actually over the regular matter, which is interesting. And there's a whole bunch of stuff I can buy. I could buy something like this. Oh, well, wait, wait, wait. Ah, game save, no! Here's the thing, Vanilla Challenge 2 is causing that to go down. Now, I could do other stuff. I could get this, which I'm still getting zero per second, but maybe this will go up. Let's see, it doesn't seem to be going up, and I can barely not afford the final thing. And of course this also goes down to zero percent when I get it. Because why not? I, I wanted to see what happens if I get a time dimension shift, but alas, I don't think we're really getting there. So at least I can get a couple more first infinity dimensions. I, I have more of everything, but it's not really anything crazy left. And Somehow this time is actually working properly, which is weird. Well, it looks like I might have to do a paradox reset, which is annoying. Yeah, see in a bit. Okay, I'm back after another reset. I just had it reset without anything else. It didn't spend my paradoxes. And then I started over it, and this is interesting. I can actually paradox sacrifice, even though my matter is not over my antimatter. Which is interesting. This means that the Paradox Dimensions, which I don't think I told you, they do not reset on Paradox Sacrifice. Or Paradox, or whatever. This means, like, the stuff that's going to reduce matter actually may be a lot more useful. If I can just get Antimatter, and that will be enough. Because I thought, you know, it's really going to be based on time speed and getting, getting it to overtake my Antimatter when I have a lot of Antimatter. But... Looks like this may not be the case. I'm actually going to save and export here because I want to try something. And that is a time dimension shift. So you can see I actually lose the option to Paradox Sacrifice because I have less antimatter. 
And I just wanted to see what a time dimension shift does. Now, it's probably going to be pretty weak because, well, first of all, I don't know where it is on the layer hierarchy. I didn't know if it was a lower or higher layer than Paradox it, because if it was a higher layer than Paradox, it would reset everything in Paradox for a time dimension shift, which is so almost like useless. But you can see, it seems like it just resets matter, and that's about it. This doesn't look very strong. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to import my save again, because while this might be useful, something that's more useful is getting this achievement. And it's, of course, it's still going to affect time dimensions. So, yeah, you gain 100 times more time shard. That's probably going to be better, at least in the short run, than another time dimension shift which is going to make things slow again. And of course, I'm getting a second antimatter dimension, which produces first antimatter dimensions, <laughs> which is kind of weird to say this, but yeah, I guess I have to say that. So yeah, see in a bit. Okay, I've reached a legendary moment where I can actually get the second dimension. Finally, I can't, I can't believe that I'm I am, this is like such an achievement for me, buying a single second dimension to get 100 times as many time shards. I can also get some of these and a few of these upgrades as well. This, this will give me additional time shards. I don't think I'm going to be able to really start getting enough antimatter to beat my matter at this time because I only have 10 minutes to do it, but... At least I got the achievement, and that is, I think, the most important thing here. I'm actually gaining quite a lot of time shards. So something I could do is time dimension shift, which is, I'm pretty sure, a lower layer than dimension shift. Which we haven't gotten to yet, but hopefully you know what that is, because that's, you know, the first layer in the main game. If you don't, well... I'm super, I'm curious why you're, why you're watching minus five to start. But anyway, there isn't really anything I can do in Paradox. I could get something like a second Paradox Dimension. I'm not sure if that's the best play. Because, like, maybe I want something else. But looking at this, there isn't really many good upgrades here. There's matter increases slower. And... That's about, that's the only thing I can get. This seems like it only happens maybe per, per 10 dimensions. I don't even know. I don't even know. The per 10 dimension does nothing. But there is the new game minus three style multiplier in all dimensions when I buy a whole bunch of, when I, when I buy it. So that's interesting. I think... At this point, I'm just going to buy a second Paradox Dimension. It seems like the best play. So, second Paradox Dimensions should, in theory, produce first Paradox Dimensions. I don't see that happening, though. I don't know why it's not happening. But maybe when I go to it later, it will say one first Paradox Dimension. At least that's what I hope doesn't really seem to be actually doing anything. This is still at 81 paradox power per second. This is making me think it's more like factors in ordinal markup where the dimensions don't produce each other. They just like multiply based on how many you have of everything. So that's that's kind of interesting here. And this this will give me more time to to actually do my runs and there's not that much else to say other than that tick speed upgrades have arrived here which don't actually reduce your tick speed they just multiply all dimensions by 1.05 dilation nerfed of course because i am trapped in infinity challenge 3 yeah i am trapped in way too many challenges <laughs> in new game minus 5 I don't think this is going to increase fast enough to 
we're going to get to this much matter though so i'll paradox sacrifice for two paradoxes maybe you'll get three who knows that is a question for next episode so yeah hope you enjoyed peace out